Hi everyone. My name is Jessica Singerman and I'm an artist. And for the last few weeks, I've been making videos that I'm sharing with you on my blog at jessicasingerman.com, uh, videos to help share mindfulness tools. Um, I hope that you'll enjoy these and that they'll bring you a little bit of, of joy and maybe a bit of mindfulness and some tools that you can maybe incorporate into your life. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you the process that I follow to draw uh, from life. So in this case, it's a botanical drawing of this violet that I found uh, in, in our front yard um, just a few minutes ago. So I'm, I'm just going to do this. So I'm going to start with a pencil and then I'll be going uh, over the drawing with uh, an ink pen. All right, so this is something that you can do if you want to draw from life. Um, and this could be anything, right? So anything that you see, I'm going to be following a process that's that's pretty typical um, for for drawing something that we're that we're looking at. And I'm going to talk you through my thought process as I draw something like this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look for a more basic shape, right? Because this has a lot going on and I want to try to simplify things at first. Uh, and then, so I'm going from more simple to then uh, more complex. So I'm going to start with the basic shape that kind of encompasses the whole plant here. And I start really lightly um, because I, as I work, I anticipate that I'm going to be making changes. That's just the process of drawing. So I have this kind of oblong shape that contains all of this, and then I'm gonna start breaking it down into smaller shapes, working very lightly until I get a better sense of where things are. So I'm gonna to start to break things down into their smaller components, still keeping, um, uh, keeping these shapes more open and a little more geometric, not getting into all the little subtle changes that are happening in this. Hopefully you can see this from the screen. I'm working very lightly for now and it will get, um, the drawing will get a little more, it will get more intense or heavier as I go and figure things out. So right now I'm figuring out where these leaves are sitting uh, with respect to each other. Everything is always relative in drawing. So I'm drawing leaf shapes and comparing them to each other relative to their sizes. And so I'm shifting things already around. I have more space here than what I want, so I'm gonna be moving. Mm, let's see, I've got my root shape here, and then I've got the leaf right here. Okay, I'm gonna shift that out. It needs a little more space. So this is the process of drawing. Everything is relative, so things are only bigger or smaller than other things, and positioned relative to each other. So when I start mapping out a drawing like this, my eyes are moving around comparing things to each other. I'm not looking for absolutes right now. And, and the reason this is a very mindful thing to do is that it, it asks for a lot of focus. Because as I'm doing this, I'm, I'm aware of a lot of things all at once and taking, moving my attention from one part to the next, keeping a vision of the whole. This is a very, it's a very meditative thing to draw from life. Okay, now this is starting to feel a little bit better and my violet shape somewhere out here. All right, so I have the sequence of ovoid shapes that are containing all the major parts. And now I'm going to start to connect them. I actually have these stems which help me visually connect them. And because these stems connect one part to another, I can visually compare things a little better even. It's another visual reference point I can use, these stems. And I'm still shifting things around. And what I'm looking for before I move into the ink is I want to get things positioned uh, to where they to where they sit right in space. 
I'm not going to do a finished drawing in pencil. I'm just getting all my, my basic shapes right and um, where they sit relative to each other. And I am starting to break things down into smaller components. As I shift these around, I start to get a sense for whether they feel right or not relative to each other. Things are starting to kind of meld and to gel here. So I'm, it's starting to make sense. So one of the tough things about drawing from life is that there are a lot of things that, that are distracting, and in this case, a lot of tiny little details. So our job when we're drawing is not to get sidetracked by all the tiny little, like the serrated edges or the tiny little components of the root ball. And so I'm, I'm continually moving, and when you make yourself continually move like this, you, you aren't able to get into tiny details. You want to avoid those details for now. Paint, drawing details at the start of a drawing is like if you're building a house and then you're thinking about the way you're going to decorate your walls or put, you know, curtains before you've even built your foundation. It, it doesn't make sense uh, and it doesn't give, you have to have a structure to your drawing. I say have to, but you don't, you can do whatever you want, of course. This is really just if you want to draw from life and make a convincing drawing that looks like what you are looking at. All right, we're getting there. So some things I'm gonna om omit. There's a lot going on here. I don't just necessarily draw this little stem with the kind of shriveled up remnant of a violet. I'm gonna leave that out. The little leaf under here, I might leave that out. I'm not sure yet, the one that's faded. These are decisions you can make. You don't have to draw everything you see. Really, I'm, I'm trying to draw a convincing violet, but that doesn't mean that I need to draw all the elements of what I see to make a convincing or a compelling drawing. All right, so now I've got some other little leaf elements down here. And then some of this root area. All right. And All right, so now I'm going to get into some more of the details, just a little bit more to where I feel confident that I can move into this with ink and not have to make big changes because ink, this ink is permanent, right? So there's no going back once I start putting the ink down. And with a uh, pencil, I can still make changes, of course. Now this drawing I'm making, I'm making it knowing that I'm eventually going to paint it using watercolors. So today I'm going to be drawing it. And then in another video, I'll show you what it's like to, um, to put watercolor on this for color. But today we're focusing on drawing. All right. Uh, great. So now I'm going to get into my violet. It's which is actually moved in the time that I've laid this down. I have sunlight coming in from this side. And this is kind of what happens between the the plant still reacting to the light and also starting to kind of, well, slump a little bit because it's been taken out of the ground. You kind of have to work a little fast when you're working with uh, live specimens like this. Um, if you want to try to get things before they change on you. All right. Okay, I think I have all the information I need now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to now take my, my ink pen, and these are the ones I really like. Uh, this is a Pigma Micron um, ink pen. It's waterproof so that once I go on with watercolor, uh, it won't budge. And after I'm done with this, I'll go back with my eraser and erase off all the, um, all the extra pencil lines. All right, so here we go. So as I move through here, oh, I'm noticing some, sorry, I'm going to make a change here. Uh, this little stem is too far down on the root ball. I'm going to move this here and I'm already going to erase that. Gonna get off some of the excess.
clean that eraser up, get that off. Okay, good. Now I can still make changes with the ink by just drawing um, in another place that where, where there's then where there's a pencil line if I need to do that. It's okay. All right, here we go. So I'm gonna start. Where where am I gonna start? All right. I'm gonna start in in kind of the middle of this root ball where things are sprouting out. Take a breath because I want to make sure I'm relaxed as I start to do this. It's, it's important when you're drawing something really meticulous that you breathe. <laughs> I mean, it's important that you breathe all the time, but when you do something like this, if you hold your breath, you might end up holding your breath for a really long time <laughs> because you are afraid to mess things up. So you want to get into practice of, of breathing and exhaling, especially before you start to make marks. All right, so I'm going to start to move into this edge of this leaf. There are ser it's a serrated edge, so I'm going to to do that. And I'm still always checking, comparing with my plant, to, because I can still edit things before I put the ink line down. I can make a decision to to change things up a little bit if I need to. All right. Now last week, or a couple weeks ago, when you if you watched my contour drawing video, what I'm doing here is pretty similar. I'm carefully following the contour of this plant. All right, so there's a lot of activity going within the plant, the ribbing in here. So I'm gonna choose what I'm going to draw here just to give a sense, because that's one of the main, if you study plants and to identify them, you look at the way the, the veins go through the leaf, right? The ribbing and the way that it's angled or the way that it comes from the center helps determine the leaf type. So this is a pretty significant detail and I want to get some of that because that's what makes this uh, violet plant identifiable. And that's just because you know I'm interested in botanical drawings and in getting some measure of accuracy. That's really up to you though if you want to include that kind of detail. So I'm not drawing all of it, but just enough to show this is a violet leaf. All right, so we've got enough detail here. I'm gonna move now into this leaf, and I'm noticing things are already changing. The plant is still moving all the time. My flower is quite different. I'm actually gonna do the flower now before I move on because that one's changing the most as it's starting to, well, droop a little bit. And I wanna keep some of the, I want this to feel alive, right? So, all right, let's see. So I'm moving into the stem. And the other part, other side of it. All right, it narrows as it comes into the flower. And then I'm going to draw the green part. We have two little elements here. You can see the other side a little bit back here. All right, now this flower, which has dropped since I drew it in pencil, but the main thing is I want to make sure that the size of the violet flower feels right relative to the leaves, right? I don't want it to be too small or too big. So I want to make sure that even though I'm repositioning this now, I'm repositioning it to look more like this. I want to make sure my size feels accurate. A bit of a split in the petal. And then we're going to move down. I'm going to take a look at this. And this one has more space, and there's another one just in the back. All right, great. We've got our violet flower. So now let's move back. There's a little 
bud back here, a flower that hasn't opened. And yeah, things are all moving. So things that I drew, you know, five minutes ago in pencil have already shifted because of the, the flowers dropping. So I need to move a little bit faster if I want my pencil drawing to actually help me. <laughs> Otherwise everything's gonna be different. All right, so now I'm drawing this leaf that's in the back. I'm actually gonna make it a little smaller than what I have here. I'm realizing here that it's a little smaller than the other ones. It's also behind them, so it makes sense that it would be smaller anyway to help convey that space. It has a little bit of a, a bite taken out of it on one side of the leaf. And on here. All right. And you know, this one I'm maybe not gonna draw the ribbing just because it's farther back. And once I get the watercolor in there, we're gonna have more information. So I have the ribbing here. I think I'll probably do it in this one as well, just because it's in the forefront. All right, let's draw this one here. It's starting to get a little smushed by the other leaf on top of it. It's curled up so we can see the back side. Longer at the base or at the end here. Again, it's curled up here. All right, I'm not going to do ribbing he on the inside here. The veins are in the dark, they're in shadow. Um, it doesn't make sense to do that much detail for something in shadow. This is getting light. All right, so these are some of the decisions that we make when we're drawing. What to leave out, what to include. All right, so now we're going to get into this leaf up here. Stem curves up. And it has also shifted. And even curled at the end. So I'm gonna get into that. This is the back side now and back to the front side. And then it drops down kind of like a heart shape. All right, so I'm making a decision now. I'm thinking about, do I really want the ribbing here or here? I don't want to include it everywhere. I'm gonna think about this a little bit more. I'm gonna move back to the one to the leaf behind these. Got to move the stem. All right, so this one has a different shape. It's kind of like half folded. And it's quite a bit larger than the one beside it. So even though it's behind it, it's still it's that much bigger. All right, then we're gonna move into the back side here so it's straighter, because what we're actually seeing here is the back side of one of the ribs, so it's nice and straight. And then here is the top edge. And there we go, okay. So I am not gonna draw the little faded leaf in the back, I just think it's gonna be too much information and what I've decided to do, actually, I'm going to do some of the ribbing down on this leaf because that one's getting more direct light than this one. This one is turned away from the light. So I'm going to add some of the ribbing detail to this one. Okay, so now we're going to go into the root ball. This is a series of layers of like half-shaped leaves and then some of the root area. Everything is kind of unfurling from this.
All right, let's take a look at this. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start slowly erasing the extra pencil lines and check that I haven't missed anything. And I'm gonna work, start working with the first elements I drew um, because I'm letting everything else dry. I wanna make sure that the ink isn't gonna smudge when I erase. This is the other reason it's nice to draw lightly with the pencil so that you can easily erase. All right, so now I've removed all the extraneous information and we can take a, a, a look at this and see if, there, if we need anything else. All right, so looking at this, I am making an executive decision that I need a little more detail in some of these leaves. I actually have a little more space now and I can evaluate this. So I am actually gonna add the, the veins in here at first I didn't want there to be too much. Now I see I have space and I can do this and it won't be too crowded. And I'm gonna do the same thing in here. I have to be really careful not to make this confusing, right? I want it to be clear that this is the underside and this is the top. So we're actually just seeing a section of the veins in here All right, let's take a look. Okay, close this up. I think we're in good shape. So here is our violet ink drawing. And in a week or two, I will show you what it looks like when I add watercolor to it. Thanks for joining me, bye.